Hello there and welcome to the Blogger's Guide to Cruising. I'm Julie Peasgood and today I'm joined by an artist who, would you believe, was inspired by the Hollywood blockbuster Titanic. At the young age of just seven, Harry Cottrell's passion for drawing cruise ships was ignited and today his amazing artwork is enjoyed right around the world. Harry, great to have you with us today. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. I have to uh, ask you initially, what was it about the film Titanic that, that you know, made you want to draw cruise ships? I think originally it was just the, the sheer size of the ship that sort of grabbed my attention and just seeing other bigger and better ships since sort of the Titanic since she was built just grabbed my attention. And did you draw it when you were seven? Um, I think I drew sort of much small scale drawings when yeah. I was younger and they just got bigger and better just like the ships really. Fantastic. Now, by the age of 18, I believe you'd drawn 50 ships. Um, I'd had my drawings presented on board 50 ships by then. But wow, I've drawn so you... more since. Um, they're up to about 70 or so now. And you're 22 now? Yeah. And we're talking large scale drawings, aren't we? Yeah, some of them can be up to seven or eight feet long, depending on the size of the ship. OK, well, we'd be a bit challenged by that in the studio, but do you have a yep. smaller one we can take a look this at? This is a recent one of okay. Queen Elizabeth II, the old Cunard liner. OK. And I, she was my first ship that I ever yep. went on. Oh! Oh, Harry, it's absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Gosh! And I want to ask you about your pencils, HP2, softer, harder? Just regular pencils. Just regular pencils. And pencils and, and fine liner pen to do the outline. OK. And, well, I want to talk more about your, your drawings actually later, but I just initially have to ask you, how long would this have taken? It's um, marvellous. This one was probably about 20 hours or so, sort of spread out over a week or two. OK. Um, but the much larger ones can take quite a bit longer, sort of up to 60, 70 hours. Fantastic. Well, we're going to talk more about that probably after the mm -hmm. break. I want to go into, into a bit of depth about that. But just tell me, what was your, do you remember your very first experience actually sailing on a cruise ship? Uh, my traveling? first cruise was on Queen Mary 2, uh -huh. I think when I was 16 in 2010. Um, and that was just a two night taster cruise to Cherbourg and back. Okay. But even once I'd done that, I was hooked and I had the taste of what cruising was like on different ships and I just wanted to go back. OK. What was it that you liked particularly? Uh, I think just, again, the size of the ship and the things to do on board and the luxury things on board, just everything, the elegance of the ship. Yeah, well, I mean, that is, she's a particularly yeah, yeah. elegant ship. Yeah. Have you found uh, that she's been sort of your, your benchmark and others have fallen? Um, or, have, or has each ship got yeah, something yeah. so different to offer? I think talking to other people, quite a few say their first one is the one that they sort of have a favourite for. Yeah. Um, which it is for me, Queen Mary 2 has always been my favourite. But until recently, I've done Harmony of the Seas and she's sort of maybe grabbed that because it's a very different ship, but there's a lot more to do on board. And right. again, yeah, big it's a contrast. very big ship. Though. Very big so, ship. Well, I've spoke yeah. to Marcus Adams about, um, yeah, about, yeah. about Harmony, but tell me your, your experience. What, what was it like? Um, just absolutely amazing. I wanted to sail on the Oasis class for years and I'd seen um, Oasis of the Seas come in Southampton. We were on a press trip, so we got to welcome her in. But to actually be on board and to walk into Central Park and see it open up, that was the sort of real wow factor of the ships, just the big open spaces, the different things to do on board and the abyss, which yes. we went down 24 times. <laughs> 24 <laughs> yeah, times? Back up and down. We were trying to get to 25, but they just closed off on the last night. Oh. But they had already let us through once and said, go on, one more. Oh, that's so magnificent. And the food on board and everything. Yeah, the food, just the buffet, the different restaurants. There's so many different venues on board you can go to. Yeah. But it's finding the time sometimes just to fit that in because it was only a four night cruise. But there was exactly. just so much to do. And of course, I've got to ask, have you drawn her yet? Yeah, but, um, drew her a week or two before, finished it off and then presented it to the captain on the bridge, I think on the sea day back to Southampton. So it should hopefully be displayed on board somewhere right now. Wow. And do you present them in, in sort of the, the, the artist tubes um, and let them get them framed? Uh, yeah, generally. Right. Because it's easier to transport it. Of course it is. You carry can't in take a massive it. Yeah. bulky frame. That, shimmer, that must have been a big yeah. piece of lining that paper. That was <laughs> about eight, eight and a half feet long, I think. So well over two metres. But obviously she's the biggest ship in the world. So. Wow. But, but lining paper, well, I'll come back to it later, it's such a clever medium yeah, to draw yeah. on because it's going to stretch to the length of any yeah. ship and be perfect. Yeah. Very clever. Cunard's quite 
uh, there is lots of myths and misconceptions mm -hmm. around cruising, but I would say generally it's a, an older line and you're a younger yeah, yeah. person, but you, it just was a marriage, was it? I think I'd seen, watched uh, documentaries about Queen Mary too, so she's always grabbed my attention and it was, just happened to be the first ship I went on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Cunard is generally sort of a more traditional line. Um, That's a good way of but putting it. I still enjoy sort of the different experience, different cruise line offers. Yeah. It's just yeah. so much to do on all of them, really. And it just varies so much. Big ships or small sh ships? Do you have a preference? Um, until recently, it was sort of the larger ships that I went for. Um, but we did a one night cruise on Cruise and Maritimes Discovery oh. um, a few years back. And that, I wasn't sure whether to book it or not. But I thought, well, it's one night, why not try it? Um, but since then, I've tried all sorts of different sizes of ships. Yeah. Um, generally, I like the larger ones because there's a lot more to do on board. Sure. And there's so, so much to see. Um, but the small ones are quite nice as well, just to relax and sort of not be as busy and running around trying to do everything. Exactly, especially if, the, it's, it's, a, if it's a great itinerary. Yeah, yeah. I have a particular soft spot for Cruise and Maritime. Mm. I've, I've been on Marco Polo, yeah. I think, three times, but I'm going on Magellan mm -hmm. soon, so I'm yeah. excited about we were, that. I think I was on board last year for my 21st birthday on yeah. Magellan. Right. And we're booked on the uh, maiden voyage for Columbus. The oh, new fantastic, ship the new year. ship. And what are your favourite things, Harry, to do on board other than drawing, um, of course? Um, but maybe actually you don't draw while you're on board. You, you I do haven't that. tried it yet, yeah. but <laughs> maybe one day. Um, I just think trying all the different things. So we spoke about Harmony of the Seas. We tried um, the rock climbing, which was quite scary. Um, the flow rider. Didn't quite get good the enough to stand rider. up. Yeah, the surf simulator on board. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we were put off by it at first, but we just threw ourselves in and went, yeah, we'll do it. And it was amazing fun. We left it to the last day, but we regretted doing that. Oh, right, because so you, you really could have got to been it. getting good yeah. at it, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, so fantastic. All the different things, all the restaurants, everything, just trying as much as possible. The right. ships just offer so much to do. What's on your bucket list, Harry? Um, I think I'd like to just cruise more of the world. I've only been sort of Northern Europe way, so I've visited okay. like Amsterdam and ports like that. Um, but I'd like to go up to Norway perhaps next year um, and maybe down to the Med. Yeah. Um, that's probably my next plan of yeah. where to go. I can highly recommend the fields yeah, actually, yeah. they're amazing. Why do you think cruising has become so much more popular, certainly mm. in the last decade? Um, I think just there's been so many new ships come out and people always have this misconception that there's not much to do on board and it's yes. for the older generation. But I think more and more of the cruise lines like Royal Caribbean and even some of the smaller ones like Cruise and Maritime have come about to sort of attract a younger market. Um, and there's more sailing from the UK now. Mm. So I think it's just grow over and over sort mm. of over the years. Yeah, absolutely. And you've seen big developments yeah, yourself yeah. personally, presumably. Well, I mean, when I first got into ships, sort of, they weren't as, nowhere near as big as they are today. Um, but I've seen the size of the ships grow and the different amenities on board. Mm, and mm. you always think, what, what's next? And they come out. So now we've got next year the go-karts coming out and different yes. things. Yeah. You just think, what's next? And then they wow you again. And then they wow you. Do you would you say that you preferred a cruise-based, a cruising holiday rather than a land-based um, holiday? If I had the option, I'd yeah. always go for a cruise. Yeah. Would you? Um, we don't tend to do that many land-based holidays. Unless right. it's got a cruise involved at the end, maybe. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and favourite ports of call for you? Do you have any particular um, favourite ports of call? I think my favourite so far is between Amsterdam and Antwerp. Um, but it was only recently, the last couple of years, we first went there. Um, but I just sort of fell in love with Amsterdam, the busyness of the city, and it's so easy just to walk down from the yes. cruise terminal. Yes. Just aim for the central station and you're there within 10 minutes. I can make a recommendation. I did that uh, uh, mm. literally very recently yeah. and, and saw the amazing, in April, um, the amazing Koikenhof Gardens. Mm. And the gar I mean, there are millions, literally millions of tulips mm. and it is just so That's joyful. somewhere I'd love to go and see. It's yeah. wonderful. And Antwerp is, as, Antwerp as well. Antwerp sort of... It's not quite as busy, it's more of a sort of traditional, older, um, medieval city, I think. Yes. But um, again, it's so close. You just walk in in a cathedral there, it's amazing. Yes, it is. You it see, is. As you sail in, you, you can't miss it. Yeah, and all the, all the cobbles yeah, and everything. Yeah. And, and for anybody watching who, who sort of wants to, I mean, you, you blog as mm -hmm. well, I've, I've read yeah. your blogs, and, and wants to sort of get into this, do you have any advice for them? Um, I think just sort of don't be afraid to give it a go. Um, and sometimes for me, originally, the drawing started um, for my ambition to design the ships and go down that side of things. And I never thought that I'd be sort of blogging and visiting them and drawing current ships. So yeah. I think 
if it doesn't work out at first, just keep going because things change and you might decide that's where you want to go now and things just happen. Yeah. Um, and also never sort of say never, just keep going. Just keep going. And my sort of one bit of advice would always be just to ask, never be afraid to ask because until you ask, you're never going to know. Yeah, and absolutely. They can, they can only say no. <laughs> have you ever, have you managed to convert your friends and family to, to cruising as um, a holiday? My mum's still a bit afraid. I haven't got her yet. Oh, really? Um, she's sort of got quite a fear of the That's water. That's shocking. Oh, well, spaces. she's got a fear but, of the yeah. water. Um, but my dad's been with me and friends and family have sort of booked cruises and asked me for tips and advice. Who do Great. I sail with? What do they offer? Yeah. But yeah, but generally they always have that misconception. But I soon sort of convert them around. Yeah. Can you put a number on how many cruise ships you've been on? Um, I think right now I've cruised on probably around 15. Great. But I've visited about 70 or so now, so I've seen the different ships. Right. Yes. And for me, if you're, uh, I'd just like to give your mum a word of yeah, advice, yeah. river cruising. Yeah. Because, I mean, sometimes, actually, you know, if, 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 if you were, the mm. w were ever to be an accident, and I've never been on one where yeah, there is, yeah. you'd only be up to the water to your midriff in some parts of the river. <laughs> Seriously. True, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe a bit deeper. <laughs> but, I mean, so that would be much safer yeah. for her than than river cruise is something I've thought about doing and I'd like to do at some point. Oh, but, do? And I've I never drawn one yet either. <laughs> ah yes, well they're so not. Be something to do. Yeah, they're not as beautiful mm. most of them as as a, as a ship, you know. But um, but no, I can highly yeah, recommend yeah. them. Yeah, definitely. We're going to have a break, mm -hmm. um, Harry. Please do stay with me. Uh, yeah, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this quick break. <laughs> Welcome back to the Blogger's Guide to Cruising and cruise ship artist Harry Cotterill is still with me. Harry, I am so impressed. This is just amazing. It's Britannia. I've sailed on Britannia. That was my cup in just there, seriously. Um, it's fantastic. Thank you. This, this is all pencil. Yeah, um, I start with a um, pencil grid. I sort of just work out where the windows are um, and then when I feel confident enough, I draw the ship in a fine line or outline a pen. Yeah. And then it's all colour and pencil. Gosh, it's extraordinary. And do you use a rubber much? Um, I do. Ideally, I try not to. Yeah. Um, but obviously, occasionally, I make the odd mistake. Sure. It's, it's just extraordinary. This, is, this looks like felt pen, but that's pencil that's too? That's just pencil, normal colour and pencil. And I know, because you were telling me before we were on air, that there's always a little man. Yeah, now, what's head. he called? Ah, oh, I've got Ted. Can we <laughs> come in closer? There he is. Do you always do Ted with his He's arms in the air? somewhere, yeah, on every ship. That's fantastic. So it's fine Ted. Yeah. Great. Why, um, why don't you call him Harry? It's just always been Ted. <laughs> He's always been Ted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. That's so clever. Now, listen, uh, how long did this take? Um, this one was probably, as it's one of the larger ones, more around 50 hours or around so. Around 50 hours. Um, but yeah, it's just the larger ones always take a lot longer and a lot more patience. Um, Gosh. Colouring is always the pain when they've got so many balconies. I'll bet. So harmony, harmony, harmony took some was patience. a real <laughs> challenge. And do you do them, it's all, all in one go, or do you hop between um, several ships? Generally, until re recently, again, I've always drawn one ship and moved on to the next one. But I've been so busy lately having so many ship visits and cruises. Yeah. I've drawn two or three at the same time recently. Right. But the funny thing is, the desk I have isn't large enough for the drawing. <laughs> I was just going to so say. So quite often I don't see the finished product until I've put it up on the wall. So I almost draw it bit by bit. And it's not until I put it up on the wall and take photos or present it that I actually see it completely finished. Gosh, so it's almost a surprise for you, yeah. as for your yeah. onlookers, yeah. your admirers. With the, given the level of detail okay, that, that are in all of your drawings, where do you, how do you do it? What do you base it on? Do you study pictures of um, the ship? Generally, yeah find a side view of the ship, as perfect side view as I can. Um, and then, as I said earlier, I draw out a grid, so I'll work out the length of the ship. Um, depending on the scale I draw, that depends on the size of the grid squares. And then I just guess the deck heights as best I can. And it's just, I always say it's like a giant dot to dot, but I've got to know where to put the dots. Right. So I know there's five windows there, squeeze them in, and just everything's based around it. The Fantastic. difficult bit's always getting it right at the start. So yes. you put those first five windows in the wrong place, everything else is. Everything else. So you have mm. to have something to base it around. Yeah. And you mentioned, obviously, that you've presented mm -hmm. them to, to cruise ships. Yeah. Do cruise ships then always display them in the um, corridor? 
I don't think always. Uh, they should. Unfortunately, they should do, yeah. <laughs> um, but there's quite a few that I don't know, especially the earlier ones, um, that I don't know where they are, but people will email me randomly that I've never met and say, oh, we've seen your drawing displayed on such and such a ship, which is nice to know. I've never known it was displayed on there, and four or five years later, I find out there it is. What an honour. So, yeah. Well, maybe you should actually approach the ship and say, I'd like to come mm. on board and see it. Do they ever say to you, um, come I've on board? I've done ship visits, yeah, requested to go back, sort of after I presented it, maybe the following year or so or particularly if the ship's had a refit. So I think um, Cunard's Queen Mary 2's come back in Southampton today, um, and I'm sailing on her next month, so I'll be presenting a new drawing. OK. Um, I'm not sure if they'll keep the old one on board, possibly, <laughs> but um, I'll include the new balconies that she's had added. Yeah, because she's just had the yeah. refit, so that's fantastic. It must be uh, wonderful for the captain, especially if they're mm. a long-standing captain on yeah, the ship. Yeah, they always I'm sure seem they... quite impressed, just yeah. the detail of it. Yeah. I think quite a few have secretly taken them home as well. Um, in the earlier days. Naughty. Um, <laughs> there was, I think, um, I'm trying to think what ship it was. There was one recently, Rhine Dam, Holland, America. Uh -huh. um, the ship was moving over to P&O, Australia, and it was meant to be going off to head office, but the captain said, no, I'm going to have that. Well, that's so such a compliment, it isn't it? <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. No, I, th I think I feel pleased about that. Do you ever feel like doing classes on board and teaching people who um, want to emulate what you're it's doing? It's not something I thought about, but I thought about perhaps giving lectures or taking them on board. Or well, you mentioned earlier about drawing on board. Perhaps I could sit and draw and people could come up and ask questions. That would be fantastic, yeah. wouldn't it? You could you could do a couple of classes mm. or a, t a couple of talks and then have a position yeah, on, yeah. on the ship where people could just come and chat and... and uh, can you cope with that, though, or as an artist, is it um, very...? I'd probably have to sort of look up, just talk, and then focus on the drawing. Right. But yeah. Yeah. It would be quite difficult, but I could get on with it. OK. And what age did you sort of get to such a professional standard that, that, that you you know, sort of... you, you felt able to offer these yeah, and um, I think whilst I was at school people always used to say to me why don't you sell them and I thought no it's not going to happen and then it was 2011 or so so I would have been around 16 17 someone approached me and said could you draw this ship for me and that was when I thought okay maybe they were right and um, I did the odd commission now and then and presented them on board and then it's just carried on since but it's only sort of within the last year year and a half I've done it sort of professionally right. as a full-time job. Um, but hopefully that will continue and I'll get more and more interest. Absolutely, I hope so. What was the very first one that you ever presented on board? Um, the first one was Eurodam, uh -huh. the Holland America ship, and that came into Harwich, um, which is just up the road from where I live in Colchester. Um, and I'd just drawn her, seen the ship was coming in, had no intention of perhaps presenting it. And then I got down and thought, well, wouldn't it be a good idea if I can get yes. the drawing taken on? And I got an um, inaugural plate, like a china plate, presented back from the ship's agent. And I thought, well, if that's happened, I'll try next week. And there was another ship coming in, and it just went from there. And then I got invited on board and then met the captain, had lunch. Fantastic. And I just sort of never looked back and just want to draw more and more, really. Yeah, you mentioned your table. Do you have a special drawing room, a special um, workshop? Until recently, again, I only had my bedroom and everything was squeezed in. Uh -huh. um, and then my brother moved out, so I got his room. Ah, <laughs> fantastic. So I had my own office. But I tend to have two desks in there, and they're sort of set out in an L shape, so I can have the um, photo of the ship on the computer and then turn around to the drawing. Yeah. So I can see it on my big screen and yeah. zoom in on the detail. Have you got any you're holding back, or do you tend to present them all out? Um, I tend to just present as many as I can. Mm. Um, as I said, next month we're on Queen Mary 2, so that's one of the upcoming ones. Um, I'm doing MSC Splendida oh, for very good. September, cruise on that. Um, but I just, as I say, I, I'm aiming to get to 100 in the next couple of years, ideally. Excellent. I, do you know what I think? I think I, I know I would buy one. I would be great to have your, some of your favourite ones mm. produced as cards or, or yeah. on some of the more popular People have ships. Said that, yeah. That's an idea of perhaps getting prints on board, sort of the smaller scale ones like yes. the QE2 drawing. Yes. Um, and selling them on board in the shops on board. Yeah. I think that would be great. Have yeah. you met anybody else who does this kind of work, or is it very Not much really. Harry Cottrell? Not really. I know people through Facebook. Um, there is a um, teenager in, I think, Mexico who does a similar sort of style of drawings yeah. to me, but the quite cool thing is he does the other side of the ship, so we're sort of so, oh, so you, show both sides of the ship. Generally, most are the same, but there's the odd ship that has more balconies one side or well, that would be slightly a, different. So that it's would quite be a cool. great angle, wouldn't it, for yeah. a magazine or a paper to cover to get you two together yeah. and uh, and do that? I think that would be uh, that would be fantastic. What's on your wish list to to do next? Um, I'd like to draw the old Queen Mary or Queen Elizabeth. Um, 
sort of a much more classic ocean liner. Yes. Um, but very difficult with the sort of the sheer of the ship, the curve of the decks and the fine detail of all the portholes and rivets. Brilliant. I've drawn them years and years back, but I wasn't quite as good as drawing ah. as I was now. Do you see this as something, talking about years and years, do you see it something going forward, Harry? Do you see um, it's something you'd like to always be doing? Yeah, I think hopefully just carry on drawing ships. There's always more and more new ships coming out. There are. I think there's over 50 or so cruise ships on the yeah. order book now. So I'm sure at some point I'll draw them all. So yeah. just carry on as there's more and more ships. I'll do more and more drawing. Do you keep a copy of each drawing you give out? Um, no, nope. they're all, all originals and they're presented and that's oh, it. Oh, Harry, no record. <laughs> what about the book you've got to make or the cards we're going to do? I'll find them out. We're going to do it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and do you have, I've got to ask you, um, do you have a favourite pencil or lucky pen or pencil that you, um, or are you not, not really, suspicious no, at all? No, no. One of the funny things is suspicious, superstitious. Sorry. <laughs> One of the funny things is I always tend to run out of dark blue because um, I tend to use them on like the celebrity have a lot of blue. Their funnels, the Royal Caribbean. Yes. And I always run out of dark blue, so I've got probably hundreds and hundreds of boxes of colouring pencils, and each one's got a tiny blue pencil in. Oh, that's so I have so to buy a new one just to get the blue. Just to get the blue. Because I buy them in sets rather than individual because it's cheaper. Oh, that's... And I, I end up using them at some point anyway. That's fantastic. the blues fantastic. always run out. That's really good. <laughs> What's the oldest thing you've got in your, in your kit? Um, probably just some of the original pencils. I've got a few rulers. The rulers are always a funny one because quite often they get smashed if you leave them. They can shatter quite easily. So if you accidentally sit on them, you leave them on your chair. Oh, are you talking about plastic yeah, rulers? Yeah, I use their um, yeah. plastic see-through rulers. Um, but they used to break quite easily, so I've got two remaining. But the shop doesn't sell the same size ones, so I'd have to get used to using the, the new ones. But I'm just funny because I've always used the same two. Yeah, exactly. So. I can understand. Final question: mm. If anybody wants to look at your work, um, or you know, find out more about yeah. you, what's the best place they can go um, to? The best go place to? would be to go on my website, which is cruisecultural.com. Cruisecultural.com. Um, and on there, I've got, as you say, the reviews as well as the drawings, and I think there's over 200 different drawings on there. Wow. So of all different ships. Fantastic. Um, but I'm on Twitter as well and Facebook so they can find me Great. on there. Oh, Harry, I hope our paths cross again and uh, on board when I can see yeah. you doing your drawing <laughs> on a ship. Thank, thank you. you so much for joining thank me. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. And thank you to you for watching. I'll see you next time with another edition of the Blogger's Guide to Cruising. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.